Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Your Honor. May it please the Court, I am John Myrick. I appear today for the Town of Holden. This case involves the Wachusett Regional School District. The Town of Holden is one of five member towns. And the issue presented is whether the legislature intended in the 1993 Educational Reform Act to control how the regional school districts can allocate contributions in excess of the minimum required contribution. The scheme under the uh, 1993 Act is that a foundation budget is established, which includes various monies from the Commonwealth and then a minimum required contribution from each town based upon a formula that is applied by the uh, uh, Department of Education. What we're involved with in this case is amounts in excess of that foundation budget. Can we just go back a little bit? What do you say the intent of the Education Reform Act was? I think it's fairly clear, Your Honor, in Chapter 70, Section 1, we have an actual statement by the legislature as to what their intent was, which was to provide a fair and adequate minimum per student funding. I stress the word minimum. That is what is the minimum required contribution that comes from the towns, and it is the amount that the Commonwealth pays. Well, well, would you agree that the goal was to avoid having some towns or communities uh, that were well-to-do having a, uh, one level and then towns and communities that had to lower economic uh, levels have a different level for the students? Um, I, in part, I would agree with that, Your Honor. The McDuffie case that this court decided was dealing with the constitutional rights to education and the obligations of the Commonwealth. But I think McDuffie, having laid out some general principles, then stated that it was going to be left to the governor and the legislature to define the precise method of the funding. And what McDuffie did, following McDuffie, the 1993 Educational Reform Act significantly increased the amount of money that the Commonwealth paid for local education. But I think it's fair to say the legislature's concern was that you would not have an individual town cut its contribution because now more money is coming from Boston. So the legislature wanted to be certain that if the Commonwealth was putting money into the system, each individual town would, in addition, make a minimum contribution according to the scheme set out in the uh, 1993 Act. And there's nothing in this case involving... Well, just one other thing. Of course, Your Honor. The Educational Reform Act, di didn't it provide that the commissioner had to approve it, what, whatever the contribution of the towns were? The um, Notwithstanding the provisions of any regional school district agreement, each member town is to appropriate the minimum regional contribution as determined by the commissioner. That's correct. And that has happened here. There is no dispute that the minimum contribution as determined by the commissioner has every year been appropriated by the town of Holden and by the other four towns. Mr. Miley, I just want to make quite sure that I understand the facts here. This is what I take it. How many towns are in this regional district? Five. Five, Five Your Honor. So I take it that um, the district met the minimum foundation budget, correct? And then the, the region wanted to increase, correct? Correct. And the region wanted to apply an across-the-board increase? The, I guess I would break it down as follows, Your Honor. And incidentally, there is a chalk that may right. help follow right. this through. 
It's in the, uh, my brief in the appendix, I believe it's at page 14. And it illustrates it with what was then a proposed budget. The, the actual numbers uh, change from year to year, but, but as terms of an illustration, it may help. And in that particular year, the proposed budget was in round figures $55 million. That was the number that the regional school committee said we want to have in order to meet all of our programs and so forth. That number was made up of about $15 million that came from state and federal funding. There was close to $3 million uh, um, uh, that related to debt financing. There was a couple of million dollars in transportation and the then the required minimum contribution from the towns for that projected number was 32 million. On top of that, to get to the 55 million, the decision was that they needed, the regional school district needed another $3 million from the member towns. That's a voluntary contribution in the sense that it's not required by statute. And indeed, chapter 70, section six, says that if there is going to be more than the minimum required contribution, it shall be charged in accordance with the agreement of the uh, regional school district. What we're dealing with is how that, for that year, that $3 million gets allocated. Yeah, and you have a, a huge differential impact if you look at it on a per capita student basis. Go That's ahead. precisely, Your Honor. Well, I, I guess what I was asking was the, the, the additional amounts, and I'm looking, it wasn't quite clear to me how those additional amounts, if we're looking at that budget, the 2004-05 budget, in, in the second column, how those are calculated? I mean, how the region calculated those? Um, it's really the budgetary process. The superintendent makes a proposal to the school committee. The school committee... Uh, then makes a recommendation to the towns, uh, which is how the three million dollars comes in. And the, in, in this recommended budget, the uh, school committee decided that um, it needed three million dollars more than the foundation budget. Then that three million dollars in that year was allocated on the basis of per pupil because it reverted to the uh, pre-1993 language in the uh, regional school district agreement, which was a per-pupil basis. It's a rolling five-year average, but for purposes, call it a per-pupil basis. And so in order to prevail, that seems to be a perfectly straightforward way to do it. In other words, it's not the... the there's no decision to sock it to a particular town. I mean, they use a, you know, we, we make a determination. We need $3 million more. We're going to find a reasonable way to allocate this among towns. And a little unfair, you know, to charge town A if it's only got 200 students, you know, with it. So it, it figures out how to allocate these. Well, the, it, um, from the vantage point of the town of Holden, Your Honor, it's a little unfair to say to Holden, um, we want you to subsidize the education of Rutland students, which well, is the really way... Not, it's really not doing that. What it's really doing, because you've got the foundation budget, which is what triggers it to begin with, it says, we want to spend an another, another $3 million on the schools in this system, and we're going to take every student and, and you know, if there, if there were a million students and we want $3 million, we're going to assess... Three dollars, and then just figure out. So they're not subsidizing, in that sense. The on the. In other words, they're subsidizing if you think that the legislature was requiring richer towns to quote subsidize under the foundation budget. Correct. Yes, Your Honor. Right. That that, that that's the claim of the quote subsidy. In other words, if you if you take a look at the minimum regional calculations, the contributions, that, that's where the skewing occurs. Am I correct? Yes, Your Honor. So the town, the, the, the region is then proceeding quite fairly, it seems to me. Every student gets a $3 million add-on. 
but, but essentially by saying, well, we're not going to do it until you've all come up to an equal level, you're in essence undermining um, or, 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 wouldn't the Legion be doing it in violation of the, of the clear requirements of the Foundation budget? With, with respect, Your Honor, no. Chapter 70, Section 6 specifically leaves to the uh, regional school district the determination of how any amounts in excess of the Foundation budget are going to be determined. Uh, and the, the uh, that which no, is no, no, I understand that. But so what you said to me is they 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 set three million dollars. Everybody agrees you need another three million dollars or whatever the process is, right? But and they then do it on a per capita basis, so they're not asking um, Holden to subsidize anybody else. It's only when you then factor in the foundation budget, which is statutorily required, that you then get a claim of subsidy. I mean. Th 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 Maybe I'm just missing something. Uh, right. Your Honor is correct that if you focus only on the of the the additional amount, then that was being done on a per student basis. But, but I, I, I can't focus on the foundation amount because that's statutorily required. Correct. So I've done what I've I've done what the Massachusetts legislature has told me to do. The Massachusetts legislature has also told me if I want to add, I can add. I can add three million, five million, ten million, nineteen million, as long as I go through my budgetary process. And now I am allocating that on a perfectly fair basis. The um, that would be a perfectly fair basis on which to allocate it. But the there is nothing in the statute that restricts how the uh, regional district does the allocation. The regional district could well have said. Uh, uh, hypothetically, um, we're going to do this based not on a per student basis, but on a what students in what grades basis, because it might be more expensive to educate students in high school grades than in elementary grades, for example. That is, is a matter that is left to the uh, regional school district uh, through its member towns and through the amendment procedures to determine how this shall be done. So, so the amendment. So you folks came up with a, a credit and a debit system to try to uh, balance it out as uh, as far as each town the number of students to to, to get back. And, and I think in, in in stating it most specifically, Your Honor, to get back to what towards what the original approach was, which is we five towns band together and we are sharing our costs on a per student basis uh, and, and carried through to the extreme um, and we're well short of that extreme on the, on, in reality, that would be what the ultimate result would be, that we would be going back to what the towns contracted to do back in 1951. If Rutland feels that's unfair and the person who may be at the lower end, a town that may be at the lower end may well vary over time, but Rutland has the right to withdraw from the regional district. They're not stuck with this. If they look at it and they say, we can do a less expensive job of but educating our children. they might not be able to do a less expensive job. That's that, the problem. Okay. That's the, essentially what you're doing is you're holding a gun to their head to say, as I take a look at the contributions, you need three million dollars. I don't quite. I, you know, I'm looking at you know column A, but I take it that Paxton would have to come up with, um, you know, they do, Paxton, Princeton, and Rutland would each have to come up with an additional one million dollars, give or take, under your theory, correct? In other words, the three million words, the three million dollars stays constant. You now want to allocate it, and you're saying Paxton, Princeton, and Rutland have to each come up with a million dollars. So they each have about a 25 percent increase in their town. Correct? Uh, I'm hesitant on the mathematics on my feet, but, but in principle, yes, Your Honor. And if it turns out that, in fact, you can't run a kindergarten through 12 for what's now $5 million from Rutland's point of view, that's why you're in a regional school district. Essentially, you're saying... You must. Well, the, the reason to be in a regional school district is it is generally less expensive 
and you can have economies of scale. Correct. But you're saying if you don't agree with – if Rutland doesn't agree with this, they can always just leave. And I'm saying that's not a real choice because you can't run a K through 12 as well if you stand alone as if you in this region. Um, I, I think you're correct on that, Your Honor. That, but I think that's one of the, the realistic pressures that is on Rutland. The effect of this has been that Rutland is only now – paying as much at education as it was back in 1993. The, the, uh, imp, uh, so that, the, again, in terms of the unfairness, from Holden's viewpoint, we have been, as a result of the 1993 Act, subsidizing the education of the Rutland children. Uh, we're not changing that, but we are saying that going forward, we have gone through the proper process to amend and the uh, amendment has been um, uh, adopted by the towns, first recommended by the school committee, then adopted by four out of the five towns. And even the commissioner admits in his uh, uh, letter where he disapproves it that, in fact, the, uh, the amendment is not inconsistent with the specific language of the statute, his position is, as I understand it, that it's inconsistent with the intent of the statute, and I would suggest that, it, that to the contrary, there is nothing in here which interferes with the legislature's intent that there be an adequate per student, minimum per student funding. Is it your position that the commissioner does not have the authority to disapprove? That is correct, Your Honor. The, and I'll, I'll leave to the, I see I'm about out of time, so I'll leave that argument to the brief. But in turn, very briefly, um, there is nothing in the statute which authorizes regulations by the uh, uh, Board of Education that deals with the amendments. The regulation that has been issued deals with a reorganization of a school district, which is defined to include either adding more grades or more towns. And the commissioner takes that language out of context to say, I have right here in the regulation the right to review and approve or disapprove uh, uh, an amendment. Uh, I think it's a very limited uh, regulatory authority, and under the Knapp Shoe case, it should be read in context with everything. Uh, and if it's read in context with everything, then, it, then I would suggest that it uh, does not apply to uh, uh, an amendment in which there is no increase in the member towns or increase in the grades. I thank, thank you, the Mr. Miles. Ms. Willoughby? Good morning. May it please the Court. Uh, for the record, Jane Willoughby, Assistant Attorney General representing the Massachusetts Department of Education. Uh, I will be sharing my time equally with counsel for the town of Rutland, Mr. Riley. Under the proposed amendment to the Wachusett Regional School District Agreement, Rutland, the poorest town in the district, would be required to pay over $3 million towards the district's additional assessment, yet Holden would be required to pay nothing, and the other towns which comprise the Regional School District would be required to make only nominal contributions. I think that's very clear from, uh, from the record. Could you address the, um, the authority of the Commissioner to challenge this? Certainly, Your Honor. Under the plain language of the regulation 603 CMR 41.03, the commissioner clearly has the power to approve or disapprove an amendment to a regional school district agreement. That regulation finds its statutory authorization in Section 1B of Chapter 69, which provides, among other things, that the board is required to establish policies relative to the education of students that it must ensure that all school committees comply with all laws relating to the operation of the public schools, and that the board is uh, to establish other policies as it deems necessary to fill, fill the purposes of that chapter, which is to provide a quality and sufficiently funded public education system. Holden's limited reading of Section 1B would run contrary to the rule that where there is a broad grant of authority to implement a program of reform, the agency generally has a wide range of discretion in establishing the parameters of that authority. The regulation in question also effectuates 
uh, the intent of Section 14B of Chapter 71, which requires departmental approval of all regional school district agreements, including provisions regarding the method of apportionment. By implication, if the department has the power to approve or disapprove such agreements, it also must have the power to approve or disapprove substantive amendments, particularly here where the amendment at issue is one that goes to the very heart of the Reform Act. Beyond that, the regulation is valid under well-settled authority of this Court, including the principles that the Court must apply all rational presumptions in its favor and must not declare it void unless there's no conceivable basis upon which it can be upheld. The argument uh, put forward by Holden that the regulation applies only to reorganization is belied by a simple reading <clears throat> of the regulation. It's simply not the case that 603 CMR Section 41 uh, applies only to reorganizations of school districts. There is nothing ambiguous about the language of the subsection itself upon which the Commissioner relies, and furthermore, the Department has consistently interpreted the regulation to require approval of all amendments to regional school district agreements. Uh, for those reasons, uh, the uh, uh, Department contends that the Commissioner did have the authority uh, to disapprove um, this amendment. Uh, and the department asserts that uh, and if we find I didn't hear. and if we conclude that that is so that's the end of this case uh, uh, that would certainly be true your honor unless the court were to find that the the uh, commissioner arbitrarily uh, exercised I don't, his I don't, discretion i don't well, maybe that's claim my, made I think. uh the, the claim is made both that the, the, the commission did not have the authority to disapprove it and, and that arbitrary? it was inappropriate and it was in, inappropriately uh, disapproved yes your honor okay um, and and uh, the um, disapproval That's by the commissioner was clearly appropriate here because the amendment, the effect of the amendment would be to fundamentally alter the relative contributions of the five school districts uh, comprising the Wachusett Regional School District in contravention of the fundamental purposes of the Education Reform Act as codified in uh, Chapter 70, uh, Section 1. Um, as this court has, has uh, said repeatedly <coughs> in, uh, in uh, enacting the act, the legislature intended to address disparities that had resulted from the varying fiscal capacities of towns and cities in the Commonwealth. It requires a minimum level of contribution. Now, the act superseded regional school districts' prior methodology of um, assessing those right. contributions, which typically involved the apportionment based on uh, the number of students from each town attending the district school. Here, the proposed amendment was specifically designed to offset the effect of the Reform Act on the required amounts paid by the towns making up the district. There are a number of complicated steps involved in the amendment's formula, but the important point, and this is laid out in, in, in the department's brief, uh, we go through in painful detail how exactly the proposed amendment was designed to work, but the important point about the calculation is that it involved giving a credit to towns whose minimum required contribution is higher under the provisions of the Act under, than under the calculation methodology in the original agreement. The, the, it's designed to offset the effect of the lower minimum uh, contribution required of poorer towns such as Rutland and to make them proportionately more responsible for additional amendments over and above the minimum. Um, consequently, the, the, the commissioner correctly found that the um, uh, proposed amendment uh, fundamentally contravened the purposes of the act and also uh, created the risk of destabilization of school districts by virtue of the fact that uh, in this case 96 percent of the additional amendment was placed on the poorest town in the regional school district. Um, for all of these reasons, um, the uh, department respectfully requests that this court affirm the judgment of the Superior Court. Thank you, Mr. Willoughby. Ms. Willoughby. Mr. Wiley. Thank you, Your Honor. I will please the court. Uh, my name is Brian Riley. I'm here on behalf of the town of Rutland. Uh, just one point I'd, li I'd like to uh, note based on some comments a moment ago. The, uh, the parties did all address the uh, Commissioner of Education's authority yes. to review amendments. I just note that, that the Superior Court actually decided that it didn't really have to decide the case on that basis, that the question of is this amendment to the local agreement uh, inconsistent with state law or not was properly before the court, and the court found that it indeed was inconsistent. Um, I'd just like to, to note that the, uh, the 
The way these statutes came about, I think, is instructive. Uh, Chapter 70, Section 6 uh, came in in 1993 as part of the Ed Reform Act, uh, and it stated, as has been said, that notwithstanding the way that the local agreement may have divided up the budget before, the foundation budget is now going to trump that. Um, I'm aware of of at least one or two uh, districts that challenged that in Superior Court. It did not go further than that. Uh, saying we want to be able to use our local agreement, and statute says that our agreement uh, can do that. Uh, the courts, um, to my knowledge, uh, said, well, Section 6 says what it says, uh, and the, the foundation budget calculated by the Commonwealth uh, does indeed trump that, and the statute specific to that. Uh, in 1996 is when the amendment to Chapter 71, Section 16B came in, uh, apparently in response to perhaps some, some lobbying uh, from school districts. And it established that the, uh, if a district wanted to use its own budget calculations as opposed to the foundation budget, it could do so with two conditions. One, the bottom line of all the town's foundation budget w- was at least that much uh, was appropriated. Uh, and two, it had to be accepted, approved by either the town meeting or the city council of every member of the district. Now, that's a very, uh, very restrictive condition. And if, if uh, Wachusett is indeed a typical district where one or two towns are paying less than they would have uh, under the, the local calculation and others are paying more, would a, would a district ever unanimously say, let's uh, forget the foundation budget and go to the local Perhaps not, but I think that that speaks volumes to the intent of the general court here uh, under these two statutes. One, uh, as has been noted, the the purpose of the Ed Reform Act was to help towns that maybe don't have the same property tax base uh, and to get away from that in in terms of being more equitable to students across the whole state and to uh, to, to frankly make it very difficult uh, for, a te- for a district to go back to the way they, they used to divide things up. Mr. Mr. Wiley, and yes. I'm, I'm not questioning Mr. Mylick, but, I, but do you agree that the way the, uh, looking again at his exhibit, that the, for the 0405 proposed budget um, for, the, for the region, $3 million in round figures was then allocated to each of the five towns on a per capita student, student per capita basis? If it, was, if it was being done under, well, the, the way the agreement reads now, yes, that the, uh, the agreement, since this amendment didn't, didn't happen, the agreement now says it's divided up per capita. So that $3 million would be split up per capita per, per, per student. If, uh, if this amendment was in place, as I, I think my sister uh, referenced, if the amendment was in place, and everyone's debits and credits were no, taken no, I into account. No, no, I was just looking at. I was just looking at the his specific. Chart. Okay. Yeah, at his his chart. I, let yes. me just. I take it that you know there are a variety of ways that you can go above the foundation. That a region can go above the foundation. I suppose another way might be to look at the percentage of the 32 million, which is the total of the foundation budget, and then with respect to the 3 million, allocate each town in accordance with that percentage, right? I mean, that, that, that's an option that's available. Uh, yes, that would be, that would, if, if the, if the uh, local words, agreement. The, the, per capita, the per capita calculation, um, ha- the per capita calculation pays the least attention to the legislature's obvious intent, which is to make sure that those towns that don't have the adequate property tax basis not, um, you know, have poor educational schools. In other words, once you go to per capita, you're essentially saying, all we're going to do is meet just the foundation, and then we're going to go back to the old system, correct? Uh, correct. And, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, ch- uh, Chapter 70, Section 6 states that, that anything above the foundation budget is handled the way the agreement used to or, or the way the agreement does. And wh- if that's a per But you can do it basis, on any other way as long as, and then the Commission would say as long as the effect is not to undermine, you know, the very purpose of setting the foundation that, budget. That's right. And I think the, the, uh, the Commissioner 
and the Superior Court, I think, had issues with, uh, with this proposed amendment on both the intent of the Ed Reform Act, for the reasons that we've talked about, uh, as well as the specific language. And by that I mean you have Section 6 saying uh, you don't look to the local agreement's budget formula anymore. You have to accept for anything above the foundation amount. And then this uh, amendment to Section 16B saying, well, if all towns vote to do it, um, then, you can, then you can go back to your per capita or whatever the formula might have been. The effect of this amendment is that even though there was not a unanimous vote to do this per capita, the amendment by using this credit debit formula is going to end up with, uh, once the extra $3 million uh, over and above is, is factored in, you end up with a per capita budget. And I, I think uh, Holden has been upfront with that all along, that that's the purpose here. And that, you know, I submit, and the commissioner and the Superior Court agreed, that, uh, that that is directly inconsistent uh, with uh, Chapter 70 and 71, and that's the reason that why this amendment should not uh, should not be approved. Uh, it's the reason stated by the commissioner and the Superior Court, and uh, that's why we're we're asking that the Superior Court judgment be uh, affirmed. Thank you, Mr. Lanny. Thank you. All right. Hear me, hear me, hear me. All persons having anything further to do before the Honorable, the Justices of the Supreme Judicial Court, now sitting at Boston, within and for the Commonwealth, at present depart and give your attendance at this place tomorrow morning at 9 o'clock. For the time and place is in this court is now adjourned. God save the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. <laughs>